Hi guys and welcome back to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is another whiskey review. I don't do numbers anymore because I can't remember them. So what I have for you today is a single malt Scotch whiskey from the Campbelltown region from what I would probably argue is its favourite child. Campbelltown's favourite child and that is the Springbank Distillery and Springbank is a fantastic distillery it's one of my favourites, they do a lot of things right and they do those things really well. It's all about natural presentation, they've still got their own uh, floor maltings and what they also do is they actually produce three different types of spirit. They produce Springbank, hence the name you know, of the distillery, Springbank. Springbank is their most produced whisky and that is a peated style of whisky very, very fresh, very, very punchy, lovely, lovely levels of spice. Long Row, which is their heavily peated dram, which is basically turning Springbank up a notch. It's like properly heavily peated. It's really, really lovely as well. And the third one, um, now I say that Springbank is probably Campbelltown's favourite child. The third whiskey that Springbank produces is probably, I would argue, their least favourite child, I suppose you could argue. It's still very popular and it, it goes very, very quickly when it goes on sale. But you hear people clamouring about Springbank releases, you hear people clamouring about long grow releases, but you very rarely hear people, or certainly not as often, hear people raving and clamouring about releases from this particular um, spirit from Springbank Stable. And that's this. Hazelburn. So this is the Hazelburn 10 year old from the latest batch that I picked up last year because there used to be more of this around but the latest batch was released in August 2020 um, and this is the 10 year old it is non-chill filtered natural colour bottled at 46% again Springman do things right they do it non-chill filtered and natural colour. <coughs> Hazelburn is a non-peated, it is unpeated. So where I've already said that Springbank is peated, Long Row is heavily peated, this is the polar opposite, this is unpeated. And the difference with this also is that Hazelburn is triple distilled. And this is another thing I love about Springbank, they do, not only are they doing three styles of whiskey, they're doing three styles of whiskey completely differently. There's not just a little thing just not one difference between them. I believe that Springbank's distilled two and a half times. I think Long Row's distilled twice. This is triple distilled. So Hazelburn is triple distilled. Triple distillation isn't something you see massively often in Scotch. It's historically what has become associated with Irish whiskey or a lot of Irish whiskey. Not all of it. That isn't what defines Irish whiskey, I'd like to say. In Scotland, you've got Ockentoshan probably being the most famous triple distillate team um, because they do triple dis uh, you know they triple distill their whiskey. Springbank and Hazelburn is you know Hazelburn at Springbank should I say is triple distilled, which is quite unusual. It is. It, it basically enables a, a, a can I say softer a more approachable style of whiskey, I guess. Um, but again, approachable is kind of up in the air. It's like, what is approachable to someone? It, it I, you know, you sod it, I'm gonna say softer. It's, it's a softer style of whiskey, it's a cleaner style of whiskey. It only sort of takes a couple of seconds to kind of realize that if you're putting something through the distillation process, not once, twice, but three times, it's going to have quite an impact on that spirit. It's going to make it a lighter spirit because it's going through those stills again. It's getting recondensed. It's going back through. It's going through. It's going through. So Hazelburn is a very, very unique spirit for Campbelltown because apart from Springbank, I mean, you've got the Glen Scotia Distillery, which is another fantastic distillery, and you have the Glen Gyle Distillery, which is Kilkerran. Neither of those guys triple distill. Appreciate that Glen Gyle is owned by Springbank. But um, but yeah, neither of those guys do it either. And again, going back to Ockentoshan, Ockentoshan, to my mind, are probably the standouts in Scotland that 
utilise triple distillation. And again, the majority of triple distillation that you will see or certainly see in blurbs on the back of bottles or on, online will be in Ireland. It will be Irish whiskey. Not all Irish whiskey is triple distilled. If it is triple distilled, it does not make it Irish whiskey. There is a lot more to Irish whiskey than triple distillation. That is a fallacy and a myth. So, and I will be looking at more Irish whiskies as things go on and as times go on. I'm a little bit low at the minute. I only have two in stock. So, a lovely kind of gold in there. This was matured in ex-bourbon casks, I believe. On the front of the bottle, it just says matured in oak, which kind of goes without saying because it has to be. In Scotland, you have to mature a whisky in oak. Uh, yeah, again, so there's not much information on the back of it apart from what you need to know, I guess, which is non-chill filtered and no caramel colouring has been added. This may cause a slight haze to develop at low temperatures, which should re soon return to normal. So, I appreciate if you're probably watching this review because hazel burns a bit niche, isn't it? It's one spirit of three that a very popular and very whisky geeky distillery produces. But if, you, if you're new to whisky, hello, thanks for watching. There is nothing wrong with a whisky going cloudy when you add water to it or the temperature reduces. That is the fatty, the fatty kind of enzymes in there that basically indicates a really nice, thick, oily, viscous spirit. And chill filtration removes that, which also removes some of the texture and, in my opinion, a lot of the flavour. So again, going back to the whisky, a nice light gold. You can already see, going back to what I was saying about that chill filtration, you've got some nice, slow legs going down the glass. And the nose is lovely. It's To me, it's, it's, it's crazy when you think about it, but if you've ever tried Springbank 10, imagine that some, like a crane has just come along, a flavour crane has come along to Springbank 10 and just lifted the peat out and the smoke out. That's what you're getting. You're still getting the, like, haylage, which is you know, dried hay for uh, for cattle feed. He's still getting the salinity. Got a lovely toffee, a lovely spice. In fact, I wouldn't say toffee, I'd say something lighter like caramel. Got some honey in there. A very well-balanced oakiness, which I would probably compare to polished wood. So a bit of furniture, beeswax polish. It is light. It is lighter. It is like Springbank without the peat and taken up a bit in terms of its um, of its heaviness. It's no longer a heavy spirit. It's very light, very delicate. Mm, really, really nice nose. It's not simple. It's still very complex, still very rewarding. It's still very intense in its own way. Just the peat isn't there. And I'm fine with that. I'm actually drinking less and less peated whiskey at the minute. I, I change what I drink with the seasons naturally because when it gets hotter, personally, a lot of people do, and that's fine, but personally when it's warm, I don't want a peated whiskey. I want something light, I want something crisp, I want something fresh. Um, but also in general, I'm actually buying fewer peated whiskies. I'm going for, for a lot more unpeated stuff. Just my palate's just craving that sort of stuff at the minute. It will change again. In a couple of years' time, I might just purely be buying like a bag or something. So again, a lovely, lovely clean freshness, and it's gonna. This is gonna sound really weird, but it, this <laughs> there is right at the back a kind of smell of like hospital. So in the UK, it might. I've never been in, in a hospital. In, well, in fact, I was in hospital in America once, but that's by the by. In the UK, I don't know what cleaner they use in hospitals, but it smells like hospitals. Not TCP, like a PT kind of way, but really clean, very fresh, really nice. That's going to sound really weird, and you're probably all like, what the hell is he going on about? But for me, the standouts are vanilla, the toffee caramel kind of flavours, salinity, a bit of citrus. Lovely. Right, on the palate. Mmm. Ah. Oh. Yes. Yes, Springbank. The reason I made that noise is because even before I swallowed, 
the mouth feels fantastic. The texture is just oil. It's like drinking olive oil. It's fantastic. So back in, we've got a lot of that vanilla again. We've got that caramels back. We've now got pears, Williams pears, very particular variety. We've got some toffee, a little tiny, tiny hint of Victoria sponge cake. Maybe some fondant icing as well, because it's getting sweeter as it goes into that finish. Mm, I'm going to go back. This is, just good. this is a great excuse to drink this dram, to be honest with you. I've been putting off doing a review of this because I've had a lot of other stuff planned, but I'm really glad that I'm doing this one now. Mm. Oh, the texture's amazing. Right, we've got some nice spice in there. There's a lovely maltiness as well, like a really pleasing kind of honeyed porridge kind of note with a sprinkling of salt as well. I love salted porridge. It's the, it's the Scotland in me. Because um, I come from Scottish stock, so maybe it's starting to come through. A lot, I know I keep saying honey, but there is a lot of honey in there. Yes, there's citrus, yes, there's vanilla. We've, we've kind of come full circle as well because it becomes cleaner as it goes into the finish. My gums are still tingling because that oily spirit is really adhering to them. And the finish is medium length, I'd say. Medium length finish. Bit of sweetness. Um, a little bit of spice. Quite warming as well. Very, very pleasant. I love hazel burn. I do, and I'm really, really glad that I picked up that 10-year-old. I, I, I'm sure, I swear, there used to be more of it. Or maybe, nowadays, it's just with all the whiskey releases just disappearing like that. Maybe it's that. Maybe I just didn't notice. Maybe I didn't pick enough up. I've only got this one bottle. I don't have any more. This is it. It's been a while since I purchased some as well. Um, there used to be an eight-year-old. I had a couple of bottles of that back in the day. Never re-bought it. There was a no age statement, I think, for a while. Uh, never bought that again. Um, not because it was bad. I just only bought one bottle and then moved on. But this 10-year-old, genuinely, really, really lovely. If you can still pick this up at retail, I would buy it. I will buy it if I can find it at retail. But don't don't fall for a stupid price at auction because no whiskey is worth paying too much for. It's only worth what, what the enjoyment is worth to you. Um, so that's that's why when it comes to auctions, I've already gone through that in my auction episode recently where I talk about sticking to the low end of the auction, picking up old blends. I don't go for the things that people buy and flip because they're just doing it to make a profit. So of course I'm going to pay too much. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put money in their pockets either. So, just one last round. It, it seems to get better. I mean, we've got Nutella in there now as well. A real nice hazelnut and chocolate mix. And again, that palette. It just, for me, ticks so many boxes. It reminds me, in a way, of Deanston 12. And I love Deanston 12. But, if anything, this is a little bit more refined. Has a little bit more oomph about it. Um... And yeah, fantastic dram, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. So I'm going to box it off now. Thanks for watching. Um, as always, feel free to subscribe. I'm not going to beg. I appreciate it if you don't want to. It's all good. I'm on Twitter at Maltbox, Instagram at Maltbox Whiskey. I also have the website now over at MaltboxWhiskey.com where I do opinion pieces and reviews that don't make it onto the channel or that I feel are more suited to a reading format. So thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.